design space profiler is uh, an advanced feature that really adds a tremendous extension to the profiler, which is so powerful. Uh, and so I wanted to start today with, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice. While in practice, there is. And what is between theory and practice is sometimes the concept of variability. So if we had just some um, imaginary process where we have a couple of uh, knobs on this machine that's running this process, and we can adjust temperature, pressure, and time. Uh, we could imagine that every time and every moment during every run, the intentions that we instruct the machine to execute by setting these knobs are faithfully and precisely executed and result in the exact value being replicated every time, no noise in our system, and we get a common value uh, for our output that is well within spec and right around target. So in theory, that's what would happen all the time. But in practice, uh, our intentions might not be completely executed uh, reliably. There may be drift, there might be disconnect, they're in a closed loop, the sustained set point, uh, external influences, whatever. So these variability in the actual points where things occur can creep in, which causes uh, variability in your output. And as this extends, what we may find is we start getting things occurring outside the acceptable limits. So it becomes really important to not only understand how the process works, but where we will instruct operations and design our equipment, uh, what bands of operations we are going to run at. So if we could imagine green zones being put on these uh, controls that might start to carve out a space, a design space that we are going to try to characterize and understand. Okay, so what I'm going to go to next, we're going to work through this a couple times because uh, this does take a little bit to, to get your head around. So I'm starting with the profiler and uh, I will just kind of assume people have seen this before, but just in case you're not familiar, um, we've done an analysis of this corresponding data table, which appears to be a DOE because I see a low number of runs and I see uh, set values for these parameters. So uh, this has been done. We've got 16 runs of data. And from this, there's been a height that has occurred. So we can characterize this function and see where the central tendency of the um, response is. So as we adjust these, the profiler works by giving you a cue before I slide this pressure setting to the left, I can see that my output is going to go up. So the, these X's relate to this Y. This is a very intuitive thing and one reason why the profiler is so powerful. Something else I wanna characterize, this height parameter has a certain range that we're trying to sustain between 45 and 75. So I could just play with these parameters and see that often I could land within this range, but there are some choices if I were to just move these around that would go well outside the range. So if I just randomly move across this design space without constraint, allowing these parameters to vary, I can generate conditions that are out of spec. So I wanted to set that, um, I wanted to set that playing field before we got into the design space profiler. So this is the view of the same process in Design Space Profiler. I would have gotten to that by clicking the red triangle, always the place to go and jump when exploring and saying what's next, Design Space Profiler. So in this example where I have, let's just kind of move these all to the uh, mid range here, 22, you can type or move, whichever works for you. 
So we're, we're definitely in the green zone here, but there's a portion if these parameters are allowed to range to their full extent, we can imagine a volume of a design space being 100% a three-dimensional variation of temperature and pressure. Across this 100% volume, without changing anything else, the portion that we're in spec would be 82%. Okay? So how should we constrain the volume where we will allow the process to range in order that an in-spec result happens all the time or is as close as we can practically get it. So uh, we will work and I'll explain the graphics here because this is a little tricky. So these sh graphs show the relationship of these X parameters in the same dimension as these X parameters, but the Y is the in-specification portion. So it's no longer the Y of the base response. And these little trails here, these red and blue, show in what direction the inspect portion will move as we uh, constrain the space. So first I'll just do this by hand. I'm gonna grab a point and say, pressure cannot range up to 25. Instead, what if we constrain the pressure? Notice we're moving uphill on this red band. If we constrain this, the portion of space we are allowing the process to play in has gone down, but our in-spec proportion has gone up. So again, as we constrain this space, you'll notice the portion uh, the process can run in is going down, but the specification is going up. So I wanted to first illustrate this moving just the design space profiler. What you'll see in regions where this is relatively flat, for example, time, we can see across this time band that everything's pretty much in spec right here. And similarly, as we constrain the time values, while the portion of volume will drop, the in spec doesn't change much. So I wanted to illustrate first manually moving this, Okay, uh, we're gonna do this a couple times because this mentally, it's, uh, it's important to understand how this works. Um, jump will move this for you if I were to start at a wide portion of space and click the move inward button, we would see successively the volume portion going down, the inspect going up. All right, so conceptually now we're gonna make the next leap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make and connect a random table, 10,000 points across the design space. So we, we just made a table and we can see these same ranges of temperature, pressure, and time, right? And we can see our height parameter. I'm going to do a scatter plot matrix and this will draw a graphical representation of the intersection of pressure and time or temperature and time, and also graphically illustrate what portion of the design space is still eligible. So we can see as I move this temperature in, I will start to constrain this temperature space. And what you'll see is the green uh, is, within spec, red is out of spec. And we can see that this space successively shrinks, but the number of red or out of spec successively goes down. So I can click this move inward and manage that. So conceptually, uh, hopefully people are starting to get that we're cutting down this operational space, um, but we're increasing the likelihood we're in spec.